Hey everybody. So in this video I'm going to be replacing the inner tub spin basket on this Kenmore 90 series wash machine. It is a model 110.229121000 and this procedure should be very similar if not the same for most if not all of the Whirlpool direct drive washers. So the reason why we're replacing this tub, you can see it's got a little bit of rust in it, but this is the real issue. You see how the tub is actually crooked? That's because the center piece in here where it connects to the transmission is actually rusted. It's literally about to fall off. That being said, let's go ahead and get started on this thing. Okay, so here is what the spin basket looks like. This is a brand new one. Um, got this off of Amazon. Um, I bought this as well as the needed spanner wrench. I think after tax, this was like $260 or $270. So, um, I do suggest that if you're looking for appliance parts, um, you can use a site like Repair Clinic to look up your part numbers, but then go over to Amazon and buy the actual part because I saved nearly $200 by buying this on Amazon versus through Repair Clinic. And this is a genuine Whirlpool part. So, <clears throat> there's the part number. It's W1038932. So, Different um, direct drive washers may have a different tub. As a matter of fact, different ones do have different tubs. So the tub for your wash machine may be a slightly different one. So keep that in mind. You can see right there the FSP. That is a genuine Whirlpool part. So yeah, pretty amazing that this washing machine being over 20 years old you can still buy brand new replacement OEM parts for the thing. And I think I saw a date on here. Yep, February 28th of this year, 2023 is when this thing was made. So it's brand new. So that being said, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so the first thing we'll need to do is kill power to the unit. Of course, you can do that by unplugging, but since we've got the breaker box right here, be a lot easier to just switch off the breaker than having to deal with that plug. So we'll just locate the breaker for the washing machine, which is number 23. And we'll just switch it off and you can see the washer does not run anymore. That being said, now let's go ahead and pull these. So I'm going here. Just gonna pull these trim pieces off. We're supposed to pull off. Try to be careful not to break them. Okay, so there are two screws that need to come out in order to release this um, control panel. Now the screw on the right side is a bit rusted so it's going to be a little tricky to get out but let's see what we can do here. Luckily it wasn't super tight. So this wash machine spent I want to say six or ten years in an old mobile home. It was my late grandmother's home. She was no longer living in it. And in that time frame, the roof leaked, water got into the house. So this thing was exposed to moisture. And um, I got this machine back in 2016. All it needed was a new set of agitator dogs and it needed to have the um, brake unseized 
that was it. Okay, this other screw is turning, but I may have to give it some help to get out. Yeah, that screw is awful looking. I'm gonna see if I can find me a different screw to put back in it and put this back together. So, yeah. And I'm not sure why that one's so rusted like that, but yeah. <laughs> That's what we're dealing with. So, I will definitely get another screw to put back in there. So, that's what I say. This washer spent some time. Um, in a human environment, but the thing has worked fine. Okay, so this washing machine was manufactured in 2001. I knew this thing was manufactured probably 01 or 02. But anyways, um, we're in. So we got this up. And I says, this is my first time ever having this actually open like that. I probably should have opened it up years ago and inspected it, but I didn't. But, I mean, other than a little bit of surface rust on this timer, I mean, the thing has worked perfectly fine. And the fact that, I mean, the, mechanical, the, the mechanicals of this thing, the motor, the transmission, all that stuff, the fact that it's outlasted the, uh, the tub, it's just quite amazing. These are really good machines. So, there's a reason. It ain't because I'm poor. The reason why I don't have a new washer and dryer is because I choose to use more reliable products like this here than the new stuff you can find at Lowe's. But here they even include a, um, a service manual with the wiring schematic, all of that good stuff right there inside the unit. I think that's pretty cool they, they actually do that. But um, anyways, moving forward, let's go ahead and pop these um, clips out that way we can release this whole cabinet but first gotta take loose this connector for the lid switch which I had the lid switch bypass by the way <laughs> okay it's going to remove these retaining clips so insert the screwdriver like this down into the clip Push back and it releases. And just like that, these tabs come out. And this whole cabinet will come off. And you want to lift up and out. So we'll set this cabinet somewhere else where it's out of the way. Okay, so now we're officially inside the wash machine. And there literally is not much to this thing. The Whirlpool Direct Drive Washer gets its name from simply being direct drive. It does not have any belts down here. The motor directly drives the transmission and it's really interesting how this works. So, in order for this unit to run and agitate, the motor spins one direction. Not sure if it's clockwise or counterclockwise, but it spins in one direction for agitate. And then, once it gets to the drain and spin, it turns in the other direction. But the first time that it spins in the other direction, the transmission completely goes into neutral. That way the motor is only driving this drain pump. So if you ever wonder why these units, when they go into the drain and spin cycle, why they shut off and immediately turn right back on, it's to um, couple in the transmission after it drains the tub. That's why it's a lot of times you'll hear a clunk when this thing goes from drain to spin. So there's the pump. So I'll keep this in mind if I need to replace that. Just take this cabinet off and get really easy access to it and there's a little bit of there's a little bit of stuff in here because well 
back before 2016 when this thing was uh, sitting <laughs> in that old mobile home. Uh, and of course, there were mice in it. This thing was a mess years ago. But, I mean, this is really a testament to the quality of these washing machines. I mean, these things are freaking solid. Um, as mentioned, if you're looking for a solid machine, don't go to Lowe's. Look up in the classifieds at like appliance centers that sell used appliances, or better yet, just look for um, used washing machines on sale, and you might find one of these things. Grab it, because I mean, very reliable, and they're easy to work on. Parts are plentiful, but yeah, this thing's a mess. So I'm gonna actually clean this up before I really proceed on with the video. But I'm gonna show you something funny, guys. So inside here. You see this bleach dispenser, right? Well, um, <laughs> I'm gonna show you something. This wash machine has a dummy bleach dispenser, I think. I, actually, no, I'm wrong. I'm looking right here, and you can see there's little holes where the bleach will just fall right into the tub. So, this wash machine does not have a solenoid to time the time that the bleach gets sent into the clothes. This one is just automatic. Now, if yours has that, it will have like a little solenoid and electrical connector, and there will be a bleach line that you have to disconnect because this top piece is gonna be coming off here in a moment. So, you're looking at this one here, and it don't have, it does not have a line and I'm not sure if we can get on camera or not but if we look up in there there's no hole it's really just a dummy <laughs> so keep that in mind if yours has the hose you will need to disconnect it but if yours does not have the hose don't be alarmed it's just yours works a little differently okay so let's go ahead and take this fill spout out of here and what we have to do is reach in here and press to the right and that should release these tabs keyword is should there's that one you have to use the pliers but careful not to break this plastic there we are and that comes right out make sure there's no water in it You want to set that to the side, or try anyway. Get all the water out first. Now keep in mind we have not actually disconnected the water lines to this, so keep yeah, just keep that in mind. So water still is turned on to this thing. All right. So what I'm gonna do is we'll go ahead and take this upper piece off of here. You can see what I'm doing. So we're gonna take that off. And there's this little tabs that you have to pop out around the perimeter of the machine. Again, be careful because this is older plastic and we don't want to break it. It seems that once you get a few taken off, it starts to get a little easier. Matter of fact, a couple had voluntarily self-removed. And boy, we got a mess in here. So we're gonna be doing some cleaning on this thing for sure while we have this off. I mean, it's, a, it's an opportunity to sort of renew this thing. Probably would have helped to pull this whole thing out, but kind of limited on space here. I would have had to take it to the kitchen. And I really was not looking forward to having to do that. All right. Okay, so we are definitely going to clean up this top piece because it is disgusting. So I'll be doing that off camera. We'll get this all cleaned up. 
I mean, the thing has 22 years of gunk in it. Now, this machine didn't get used from, I want to say 2005, 2006 to 2016, so it's sat for nearly 10 years. So, like I say, it was my late grandmother's washing machine. But what we'll do is we'll get this inner tub out. Um, and once we have that out of the way, we'll have plenty of space to clean up this outer tub as well as the, the cover for the outer tub. Alright, so to get this agitator out, if yours has a fabric softener dispenser, which I still have mine, it looks like you know, this right here, it just pops onto the top. And I'll stick it in there just for just for this video. The reason why I don't actually use this is because it just, it has a tendency to fly off during spin. So I use a downy ball instead. So you pull this tab up and then that comes off. Your machine may be a little different depending on your model. Because I know they have different agitators or excuse me they have well they do have different agitators from model to model but also the uh, fabric softener dispensers are a little different too all right so on this unit take a screwdriver and just pop this cap off and now we will take this right here which I believe this is a half inch Ratchet, <clears throat> put an extension on there, and there's a square that is right inside there, and it just goes counterclockwise. Agitator assembly comes right out. Now, as I mentioned, these units with time, you will have to service the agitator. There's these little plastic paws on here that are called agitator dogs. You can buy these on the internet for dirt cheap. Now, as I mentioned, you don't have to take the cabinet off just to do this if you're just replacing the agitator dogs. You literally just have to take that cap off and get this piece out of here. But this is what the agitator dogs look like. You can buy them in a set. They're a set of four. And they're really easy to replace. Matter of fact, I think the kit comes with a few different things. Mine just needed agitator dogs back in 2016. That's the only thing I've ever replaced on this machine up till now. Alright, so the top part of the agitator comes loose. Now you're going to need a 9 16th socket. To get the bottom part of the agitator loose. Alright. And now the bottom agitator is out. Alright, so now inside here there is this little clamp which you'll need a pair of pliers to take loose. It just pulls out. And there's this plastic piece right here that comes out next. And now we're going to need the spanner wrench and a hammer. Okay, so before I take this out, I want you to have a look at this tub. You see all that rust down there? That was our problem. This thing is literally crumbling apart. And when it was going to, you can see how I can just move it around. It's literally about to break. Um, 
And of course, when it went into spin, of course, the uh, centrifugal force of the clothes going around and around was enough to break it loose. All right, now we'll take our spanner wrench and our hammer. And we'll get this tub out of here. So that goes on like that. Okay, everybody, so well, I finally got the tub out of this thing, or this, the uh, spin basket out. And of course, well, it didn't, I couldn't get it out using the traditional method of using the spanner wrench. I had to cut it out. I had to cut the spanner nut, and I had to, once, once I cut the spanner nut out piece by piece, I then had to cut into the piece of the old tub that was left. Once I was able to get that piece out, the uh, drive block came out with it and I was able to finally get the old tub out. It's sitting out here on the porch. And if you look, what a mess it is. So the centerpiece is actually in the garbage down there and inside of it is the drive block. So the drive block Amazon had for like five or six dollars next day delivery, so it'll get here tomorrow. But the spanner nut that holds the inner tub in, well, of course, Amazon didn't have that next day. And the only option really was to go with a local appliance parts store. Um, on Amazon, they would have charged me five dollars and change for shipping. Whereas I can just pick it up from a local store um, this week. So it'll probably take a couple of days to get where it needs to go. But I can pick it up for free. And the actual part was like five bucks after tax. So, I mean, that's the thing about these washers. I mean, look at this thing. <laughs> it's, just, it's had a rough life. Um, I'm going to clean it up as good as I can. I was kind of debating on changing seals, but I mean, it hasn't leaked. I haven't had any issues with it leaking. But if I have to change the seals, I know that getting the tub out, should I have to get the tub out again, should not be a real pain in the butt because, well, the reason why this thing won't come out was because it was literally fused together with rust um, after being in there for 20 plus years. Changing the seals on this thing would involve basically tearing it all the way down. You have to take extra stuff off around here to get this outer tub out. But I'm like, you know, if the if the, if the seal itself is not leaking, it's like, I'm not gonna really worry about it, at least for now. So once I get the parts in, I'll be able to put this back together, but in the meantime, we'll get this thing cleaned up really good because it really needs it. And got to get the metal shavings out too, because of course metal shavings aren't good. Uh, we got to get those out, get those out of here, and have this thing good and cleaned up. Okay, everybody. So I have the extra parts that I need, including this drive block. Also got a um, tub nut or spanner nut. It's still in the pack here. So, you got these two, and I've went ahead and lubed up the seals where there are moving parts. And this would also help make this a little easier to get on. So, what I gotta do is here we gotta locate the two tabs that stick up on the outer shaft. Let's get this lined up on those.
Okay, so the dry block is now on. My suggestion would be to lubricate the outer shaft really well. I ended up adding some after I started it and once it got down a little further it started to get easier. Um, just take your time with it. Don't beat, don't beat super hard with it because uh, you don't want to end up damaging anything. So now the next step will be to put the tub on. Okay, so the tub the inner tub slash basket will sit right on top of the dry block. Now don't be alarmed when you're carrying this around and you hear water sloshing around. That's because um, this plastic piece along the top has water in it. And I believe that's for um, to aid in balancing. So now I'll go ahead and Put our tub nut on. So if you look at it, you'll see that it's kind of beveled down like this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get that lubrication that I have. This is white lithium grease. I'm going to put a little bit on here and just run around the surface as I believe it would help with getting this back off in the future because I tell you that last one it didn't come off I had to cut it off so we're gonna try to alleviate that maybe put some in the threads too I guess sort of act as sort of an anti-seize. All right, so we got our spanner wrench right here. It's on the dryer. So we're gonna thread this back on. And my recommendation, don't get this style spanner wrench. There's a different style that um, doesn't have, I mean, it has these four notches to, to, um, to, of course, grab onto the spanner nut, but it also has a ridge in it so that way it can't just fall right through the spanner nut. That was very frustrating when I was trying to get the old nut off of there. So, word of advice, get a different style nut or um, wrench. And I'll try to find one and put a link in the description. Make matters a whole lot easier. Learn from my mistakes. So we'll tighten this down. And of course, the whole thing wants to turn. So I'm trying to, since we have a good tub now, we can put our arms on the tub and stop the whole thing from turning. get her hammer and give a few light taps to help ensure that it's secured into place. Okay. I think that's going to be good enough. Okay, so we got the tub in now. And I forgot to mention, yeah, I did do some cleaning off camera. Um, I cleaned the outer tub um, top piece as well as the upper and lower agitator pieces that way of course they, they're not going to be quite as grungy as they were and of course I spent a lot of time cleaning inside this outer tub 
to try to get some of that old gunk out. I mean, it ain't perfect, but it's a lot better than it was. All right, so you can see we got our outer tub in now. So next, we need to go ahead and install this plastic piece. From the looks of it, it can go either way. And we got this clip here. And that goes directly on top of the plastic piece. And now we'll set our lower agitator back on. And if you look in the bottom of the up inside the agitator, you'll see those uh, notches in there. That's what that plastic piece holds on to. Okay. Get the press down a little bit. All right. Now we need to go ahead and get our nine sixteenth socket, and let's reinstall this nut. So now the lower agitator is resecured into place. Let's go ahead and get the upper one. That sets down just like that. Now we're going to go ahead and set the um, Top assembly into place. This piece here has the agitator dogs on it. This is what helps the agitator do its thing and clean your clothes. Not just look like it's cleaning your clothes. And to tighten it down, we will take the socket off and have just this. That goes in here. All right. Keep in mind, this is a plastic piece you're threading on, so you don't need to tighten the snot out of it. All right. So you can see how the agitator dogs are locking into place. Let's now I'll pop our cat back on there. All right, let's go ahead and reattach the cover for the outer tub. Make sure you have it lined up properly. So on the washer itself, there are tabs that this locks into. You can see right there right there are some okay so we gotta make sure that the plastic so the um, outer tub goes inside of a ridge or outside of a ridge excuse me so to take your time and work with it All right, so all the locking tabs are locked into place. I'm gonna take a moment and clean this up a little further. Since it's easier to access with the cover off. Okay, so at this point, you'd wanna go ahead and reattach the hose to your 
bleach dispenser if yours has that. Mine does not because it's just for looks. Literally all it does when you pour bleach in here, it just dumps into the tub. <laughs> so you may as well just dump bleach right into the clothes, I reckon. Um, if you're washing whites or whatever. But um, now when you go ahead and reattach this fill spout, and it should just snap right into place. So you do it like this, and then bend the plastic tabs out, and they should go in. All right, so now that's back on. And before you close up your machine, one thing I would suggest is just take a take a look around at your wiring. Also, check this hose right here that goes to this pressure switch. Because if this malfunctions, your machine will flood and you'll have water dumping onto your floor. Now, of course, I didn't pull this machine out, but I'm still going to sneak back in here and take a look everything seems okay one thing I'm gonna do however before I close this up is this if I can shimmy the camera in there so if you look right in here you'll see this latex or vinyl tube attaching to this port on your tub for some odd reason, they did not secure that with anything. So I'm going to actually put a zip tie on that, just to be safe. We don't want that to come loose, because if that comes loose, you will have water on your floor. Okay, you can see I've added that zip tie there. That will help ensure this tube does not come off of there. Another good place to check will be around your drain pop, your drain hose, this is going from the tub to the pump, and this is going from the pump to the outlet on the back of the machine. Check these, make sure there's no cracks or anything like that. I mean, this is one spot where you can have a leak, so keep that in mind. Alright, so we are ready to go ahead and put this back on. The cover, that is. Okay, so I've got the cabinet back on, and I've also went ahead and Reattach the controls. Make sure you don't forget to plug in your lid switch connector. Again, on mine, I got the lid switch bypassed, but you still have to plug the connector in. Um, and also, of course, I got these pieces here back on, so we're ready to try this thing out. So, what I'm going to do is since there's a lot of crud in this thing, actually, hang on. Let's try the spin function first. And you can see, it's nice and smooth. So I'm going to do is I'm going to set this to, we'll actually do warm, and I'm going to dump some pine saw in there, try to clean this thing out a little bit. We'll set it to the small load, we'll let this thing run for a little bit, do its drain and spin, all that good stuff. see it is agitating now and it's stirring up all that water that's in there
So there's a couple things I had to do here with this thing. For one, I had to take the agitator back out and loosen up that spanner nut and make sure this tub was perfectly centered. And of course I tightened the, uh, the spanner nut back down and that seemed okay. But also it was weird. Um, one of the clamps that holds the drain pump onto the motor had somehow come loose. I don't know if it came loose when I was working on this machine or what, but it popped loose. So I had to re-secure that. Somehow I totally missed that when I was shooting the video earlier when I was talking about inspecting the pump and the uh, hose and all that good stuff. It's funny how much shooting a video can distract you from what you're looking at. So yeah, sometimes maybe it's not the best to shoot a video, but I wanted to get a video of this to share with you guys. So. And of course, as mentioned, I got the tub centered up. I located and reinstalled that clip that holds the pump onto the motor, and all is good. So yeah, the repair has been successfully completed. I have washed a full load of clothes in this thing, and it did just fine. So actually, I'll have a video of this thing washing that load of clothes over on QComp MDDX. Yes, there actually is a following for that kind of stuff and also there's a following in particular for these direct drive machines. So anyways, that wraps up for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Hey everybody. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video from Cuckoo Channel. If this is your first time, please subscribe to the channel and be sure to tick the bell so we can know if I new video posts. Please like this video if you enjoyed it. Leave a comment and share this video as well as the channel with your friends and get the word out. Also, I have a second channel that's Cube Comp MTDX. Over there you'll find videos about thunderstorms and weather, cycling, and videos about me personally. Feel free to subscribe over there as well if you like. Again, I really hope you enjoyed this video and thank you so much for your support.